So uh, how do we convert this probability measure into a value at risk? In other words, if we have this raw data as a variance covariance matrix with these particular weights and return, and the, the returns are for a period of a, of a year, how do we convert the in raw input data into a value at risk and specify a confidence interval for time period? We can do the following. We could copy the worksheet we have here and paste into a new worksheet and we call it value at risk tree. and re-specify the question. Uh, what is the cutoff point consistent with exactly 5%? Okay, so we could think of the uh, parameters here, the standard deviation and the mean as being the first and second moments of distribution. And we could then pose the question, what level what is the cutoff point consistent with a probability of 5% or 1%? To implement that in Excel, we could use Solver and go to Data Tab, Solver, set this cell here to a value of 5%. So 0 0.05 by changing uh, the cutoff point and solve. Uh, and we find here it converges to 797. In other words, the value at risk, the cutoff point consistent with the value at risk of 1% is 797. Previously, when we had looked at uh, the meaning of R, we talked of a distribution in terms of the asset return and the portfolio return. And essentially, what we're looking for is the cutoff point here consistent at the 1% or the 5% level. So if we go back into Excel, we find here, after using Solver, the cutoff point exactly consistent with 5% is 797. Alternatively, we could repose that question for 1% by just changing the value by setting the objective equal to 1% and solving. We find that a cutoff point of 625, we started with an initial investment of $1,000, a cutoff of 625 would be consistent with a 1% probability. In other words, the 1% value at risk uh, level is $625. A more direct way to make the same estimation or to uh, find the cutoff point rather than using solver would be to use norm inverse. So equal to, in fact, we could copy, copy, and so using the same parameter inputs, paste, instead of using inverse or distribution, we use inverse, IV, notice that the inverse returns inverse of the norm cumulative probability distribution for specified mean and standard deviation. So we get uh, the cutoff point. In this instance, we find the cutoff point consistent at the 1% level. And we remove true because it's not necessary. We remove true because it's not necessary. And also we should specify the 1% and that's 625 and if we said if we talk perhaps in terms of the 5% level of 
competence for the value at risk, 729, 797. Um, and in, if we change this value here to 797, 797, we get close to the 5%. If we go one more time, 797.9127 and we get to the five we get back to the five percent to understand here a little bit how value at risk makes use of a distribution or a distribution of values one approach we might adopt here uh, to visualize that is to map out the spread of values so we again we could take the norm dist function copy escape paste and instead of taking instead of getting the cumulative probability we could change this to false And then the false gives us the density function. So we hit return. And from here we can lay out a, the range of values of the portfolio. So we might start at, uh, perhaps start off at 400, 500, and pull the value down. to 1,800. Run a date now. There was an issue before with the cells calculating and they've reverted to manual. I should change to automatic. So we click OK so that the cells uh, adjust and we set up the data table, go to the data tab, what if analysis, data table, uh, and this is a column of data. So we take the input for the column and we go back to looking at the different cutoff points and hit return, hit OK and the values fill in and then we can map out have a look at this distribution insert scatter and you can see the range of values so that in our distribution at the if you like the one percent level perhaps we could improve this a little bit um, delete and get a more granular type representation and on the axis the axis below portfolio value and we're looking here at the 1% cutoff point if that's 979 it's somewhere here close to 800 so we could think of the cutoff point as being somewhere just underneath here. Perhaps just that. In other words, the one percent tail or the five percent tail would be about here. Uh, to get the 1% tail, if we go back to look at the 1% the tail, we could go to the norms inverse, norm inverse, change this to 1, and the 1% tail would be 6 to 5. So here is 600, so perhaps somewhere around here is the 1% tail. So at value at risk, cutoff point, 
at the 1% level. At the 1% level would be equal to 625 and we could make the adjustment here if we set this value copy paste special value we should get 1% we get 1% if alternatively we want to look at the 10% uh, cutoff point, we come back to Norm's inverse, 0 0.1, hit return, and we're looking for a value at risk cutoff point at the 10% level, we're looking for a value just above, this is 500, 600, 700, 800, 88. Somewhere here, so this is the 10% tail. Again, we can verify that by copy, paste, special values, and 10% probability of getting a value of this is the mean return and the standard deviation, then the probability of getting less than 889, 97 is 10%. To estimate the value at risk, value at risk at ten percent, it would be equal to well, first of all, we could just say value of investment, value of investment. at the end of one year would be equivalent to the cash amount multiplied by one plus the rate of return and the value risk at 10 percent would be equal to 1214 minus the cutoff point Cut off point. That would be equivalent to graphically taking the area. So if we thought of the highest value somewhere here, perhaps just make it a little bit bolder and brighter. The distance between this, so this point here would be equivalent to 1214, and the value at risk would be the difference between the 1214 and the 889. If we can, if we changed the value to be 5%. The value at risk would now become 416 because at the 5% level, going from the 10% level to the 5% level, we're moving the tail to 700, 600, 700, we're moving the tail to about here. If we change the uh, probability to 1%, the value at risk falls to the cutoff point falls again to 625 so 500 600 625 about there and the value at risk is given by the, the difference between these two values in this instance the value at risk would increase for the 1% level the value at risk would increase to 589.